one of the most competitive guys I've ever coached. Tremendous team guy and extremely loyal. What do you think is the hardest part about being a freshman? Uh, trying to play confidently with all the teaching and coaching that you have to take in, it's hard to stay confident in your own ability. I'd say that's the hardest part. Someone that I've really admired because of, I've watched his growth and uh, you know he's obviously the epitome of Clemson grit. Uh, I just have so much respect for him because of the, the type of person that he is. You know, when I was very young, my dad um, had just finished college and was a high school basketball coach at, you know, Forest Hills High School hey, yeah. in uh, Union County, where I'm from. And I just always was at his practices, you know, just growing up around the game and really just fell in love with it, man. You know, my dad always, um, you know, was really big on hard work. And if basketball was what we wanted to do, then that's awesome. But, you know, we needed to give our all to it. So, you know, from a very young age is when I really, um, you know, started working really hard. Every morning, I was getting up early and going to the gym because obviously my dad had all the keys being the principal. And you know, it was really a blessing that I just had the opportunity to do that because I know growing up a lot of guys, you know, wanted to get in the gym but maybe necessarily didn't have the means to do so. But my dad being the principal, um, you know, made it a lot easier for me. He, he played in high-level basketball uh, in the AAU circuit. So uh, even though some of the high school league games maybe weren't as competitive as he would have liked, he was constantly a guy that was going to challenge himself. He was going to find good games. Coming from Monroe, you take I-85 to get to Atlanta. So Clemson's, you know, about halfway point, a little bit farther. I had been in talks with Clemson a little bit. They hadn't yet offered me, but they said, you know, why don't you stop by and you can see campus. So my family and I stopped by. Had a look at campus, met Coach Brownell, sat in his office, talked to him for a little bit. We knew that Clemson would, would be a good fit for, for Hunter. Um, it's a natural fit for a guy who's a little bit uh, from the country, um, certainly the ACC, right? Growing up in North Carolina, he he was an ACC guy. He wanted to play in that league. I think that was a dream of his as a, as a young kid. And Clemson was my first ACC offer. And I remember, you know, when it finally happened, I was so happy. He thought he would be a guy who could who could uh, become a leader in the program at some point in his career, and we were going to push him to develop that kind of uh, uh, leadership style or, or into a leader um, one day. Coach Brown always said, this isn't a four-year decision, this is a 40-year decision. This is where you'll bring your kids. But, you know, once I finally came to grips that Clemson's where I wanted to be, um, man, I, I was thrilled. There's a lot of time, energy, and effort that everybody puts into it uh, for a high-level player like Hunter. Um, and so when you get somebody like that to commit, obviously, you know, there's a tremendous rush of adrenaline and thrill and excitement, um, you know, and, and uh, that certainly was the case with Hunter. You know, it was funny, we talked about redshirting Hunter his freshman year, um, just because we didn't know if he would be strong enough to, to, uh, to really contribute, and we didn't want to waste a season. Um, but the longer he was, you know, practicing with us and playing, you could see that he wasn't afraid. It takes years and years of hard work, sacrifice, you know, really blood, sweat, and tears to get to that point. So, you know, when you take it one day at a time, um, it becomes much more realistic. A lot of hard days, a lot of hard days, man. A lot of hard practices that, you know, really makes you question, it, are you sure this is what you want to do? But, you know, deep down I always knew that, you know, basketball is, you know, something God had planned for me. And I just stuck with it, kept working hard every day. And then, you know, five years later, had a little bit of success, so. a vision that you get with the young person uh, to be successful and then you you lay out a plan right and it starts with uh, you know the strength coach in, in terms of trying to get bigger and stronger uh, more physical you get with the nutritionist and work on your diet and then obviously there are things in basketball that you're trying to to work on their game for hunter it was a lot of dribbling and passing he was already a pretty good shooter he was a guy who rebounded the ball 
but we wanted to, to, you know, enhance his skill. He wasn't afraid, and I think that's a big key for young guys. He gets hard real quick. <laughs> like, it wasn't easy, and I, I definitely had a growth period. There was no question that leading into his senior year um, that Hunter Tyson was going to be the leader of this team. I think I've always been naturally a leader in a way, but I definitely had to work at it. Um, you know, stepping into that role was a responsibility I took very seriously, um, starting with last year. And, you know, it was my first time being a leader at this level, which is a lot different. And there's a lot more eyes on you. So it was definitely, uh, definitely pretty difficult. He has the personality for it. Um, he has high expectations for, him, for himself and for his team. Um, he and I connected a great deal that off season. Obviously, all these guys are my best friends. Um, so sometimes it's hard, you know, when maybe guys aren't necessarily doing what it takes to win. And, you know, these guys were all great all year. They really did. It's very rare that I had to, you know, call anybody out or anything. But, you know, on the sports team, any any leader will tell you that's part of it. You know, that's and it, it takes courage to do so. Hunter's final season was probably a surprise to some folks on the outside um, who didn't know he was as talented as he was or would play at such a high level. I don't think it was as big a surprise to the coaches um, and maybe even his teammates. And I certainly don't think it was a surprise to Hunter. You know, there's 365 days in a year, obviously. And there's guaranteed 31 games every season. So what do you do the rest of the days? You know, you need to treat those days when you're not playing games at, like game days, because honestly, they're more important than game days. You know, you'll have you'll have your game days to you know perform and shine and you know do all the things that you do. But you know those other 330 days or whatever it is, those those are the days that are important. Um, you can't have success if you don't take those days seriously. So I just try and you know, like I said, treat every day like a new opportunity to get better. And you know, in my opinion, those days are more important than the games. So pay attention, man. Hey, listen. He really has always believed in himself and carried himself as a good player. And so it's, it's, you know, I think that's really step one in being a great player is having that mindset. You know, I, I want to keep playing. I want to play as long as I can. You know, hopefully that's in the NBA. You know, I have this opportunity. I'm so thankful that, you know, God's put me in this position and I'm just going to, you know, try and do my best to glorify him through the opportunities he's given me. You know, you can't control everything, but I try and control what I can. You know, just put my faith and trust in him. I, I think his legacy will be seen um, in some of the guys who are leading this year's team. Um, certainly P.J. Hall, uh, Chase Hunter, um, you know, really good relationship with both those guys, uh, even an Alex Hemingway. I think those guys have seen what great leadership looks like, and they've seen if you want to achieve at a high level the work ethic, the standards that you need to set for yourself, uh, and those guys will, you know, try to try to emulate that. Um, those, uh, I think, those are the the pieces of legacy that that great players leave that help you sustain your program. I think Hunter saw some of those things from guys like Amir Sims and how he worked and how he improved and and how he had developed into an All-Conference player and, and a tremendous leader. And, so he grew from that experience, and, and a guy like P.J. Hall most certainly will grow from Hunter Tyson's leadership and just being around him. You know, we all are sad to see him go. Um, it, it's hard uh, because you come so invested with one another. And obviously, we're really excited for Hunter and his future.